I'm on one. You need police, fire, or medical. Police are out in the driveway, and he's um, violent right now. And I'm scared for my life, and I don't know what he's going to do. First, before we even get into anything, I just want to uh, thank you for the time today. Um, I know what we're about to talk about, uh, what we're about to speak of is is, is a heavy topic, um, and it's something that's been weighing on you for a while. So I do just want to say, first and foremost, before we dive into anything, thanks for taking the time to speak with us. Yeah, thanks for having me and taking it as serious as it is. So I guess I'll start here. Um, back in late July, I, I received an anonymous tip uh, about a possible Mike Perry domestic violence situation. And so I looked into it. And I ended up reporting uh, that you had filed for a restraining order in March, uh, which was denied and is worth noting, but we'll get into that later. Uh, but you did file for a restraining order um, against who was your then husband, Mike Perry. Uh, shortly after this uh, was reported, you went on Instagram and you posted a photo of yourself with Mike and he's covering your mouth. And you wrote, I'm done being silent. What happened is not okay. It's never acceptable. What was it that you were alluding to in that post? Domestic violence. And weirdly enough, it's taken since then a really long time to get, you know, all the evidence and things like that, that we needed to make sure that, you know, it's credible and everyone understands that it's serious. This isn't a joke. Um, but weirdly enough, October is National Domestic Violence Awareness Month. So God works in funny ways how that happens. You cornered a lot of Mike's fights uh, and people thought you guys were pretty much a, a perfect for each other, a uh, great couple. Was it always the way like you're alleging in your relationship or, or was it good uh, for a while before things changed? How, how did this come about? No, it was not always like that. Um, really just towards the end. Mike and I were together for five years. We just got along really well. We vibed, we, you know, we're, we dated for a long time. And then there were some times when we were on and off and things like that, normal relationship stuff, not um, anything crazy. But then we did get married and there were some things that happened that I think maybe pushed him over the edge or led to things getting to an unacceptable point. Um, I do think that head trauma had a lot to do with it, which is definitely not an excuse. It's uh, a more so of a reason to get help and for people to take it more seriously. When was the first time that you recall Mike uh, going too far and laying hands on you? That's a hard question when you say going too far, because some people would say someone yelling in your face is going too far. So, but really, honestly, the craziest, worst night of my life was in February of this year. I'm on one. You need police, fire, or medical? Police are out in the driveway, and he's um, violent right now. And I'm scared for my life, and I don't know what he's going to do. He's revving his engine right now. His life is inside my house, and I'm afraid he's going to hunger. Does he live there with you? No, absolutely not. He came to pick up his wife, which I went and picked her. Oh, my God, what's he doing? <gasps> Did you hear that? Oh, he there you go. weapons oh, that you're aware of? No, he does not. He just took off. Okay. Did they have some kind of fight earlier? Yes, he has a temper. What, what happened that night, Danielle? Well, it started off as a normal night. Um, you don't ever really know when something like that is going to happen. Um, so we went to downtown Orlando to go watch the magic game with a friend. When we got there, his friend was very intoxicated. This girl looks at him and says something sassy. So she picked up the drink that he just bought her and poured it on his head. I just knew what was coming and he hit her, knocked her out off her high top chair onto the floor. He started coming up to this red light and wasn't slowing down. He was speeding up, blew through it. 
I was nervous. So I called his friend that we were just with and I was like, I don't know if I can handle him when I get home and I don't know what to do. So can you please help me? So the friend came and got me and we went straight to the house. Mike was already home. And when we walked in, he was so upset, so upset. He hadn't calmed down. No. His friend tried to calm him down and he just got even more mad. And he was like, why are you here? Why did you pick up my wife and all this stuff? And the friend's trying to calm him down. It's not working. Honestly, it's just making it worse. And he seems more upset that he's there. So Mike went to go into the bathroom and I told the friend, I was like, hey, I'm sorry. I guess you should just leave. I mean, he seems more upset than you're here. Maybe I can calm him down. I don't really know what else to do. I heard him yelling to me and he was like, are you still here, bitch? Or did you leave with him? And I was like, oh, okay, here we go. So I came out of the room and I was like, hey, honey, I'm right here. Like I was just going to the bathroom. I just came out, like everything's fine. Don't worry about it. He ran straight at me like a football player, like to tackle me, sprinted across the house. And where we were standing was on tile. And I really did not want to get tackled into tile. So I ran to the carpeted uh, living room. So I got there and I was trying to like put some distance in between us, put anything in between us to like give some space to try to talk to him, to calm him down. And he was like playing cat and mouse with me, like running around objects, like literally just like horrifying chasing me. We had a uh, massage chair in the middle of the living room. That's like one of those huge ones that's like electronic, very heavy, plugged into the wall. And I had put that in between us and I was like, please calm down. I don't know why you're running at me. I don't know why you're upset with me. You know, this other girl was crazy. Like, forget about her. Let's just eat our pizza and play with the puppy. Like, don't worry about it. Don't be so upset. And he literally grabbed the chair and ripped it out of the wall and threw it across the room like hulk strength scary and at that point i was like okay i i see what's happening here this is not going anywhere good so i literally just put my back against the wall and curled up in the fetal position and he had knee on belly and just ground and pounded me until he got tired and i did a decent job of covering my face. I still had hematomas on the back of my head, my entire right side from my entire arm, my legs, uh, my ribs, everything were covered in bruises in the next few days. And he just got all of his anger out on me. And on the last punch, I clearly, I think that's why he stopped is we heard my rib crack. So he knew and sat back and I think maybe was like, oh. And I think he was also just tired, <laughs> tired of hitting me so much. So as soon as he sat back, I got up and I ran to the door and he was still sitting there like out of breath, like, <sighs> and I was like, what are you doing? And he got up and sprinted at me again. So I ran out the door. I tried to close it behind me and I just started screaming. I went straight to our neighbor's house. I was banging on every window across the house, got to the front door, was banging on it. He was running across the lawn towards me. So I went to the back of the house um, because there were no street lights and it was dark and I thought maybe I can hide. So I kept going back behind his house and I guess our neighbor came out and he was like, hey, what's going on? And Mike saw him and was like, hey, man, sorry to bother you so late at night. You know, we just had an argument. Sorry to wake you up. And he was like, uh, it's OK. And then I guess went back inside and Mike went back to our house. And I was at the guy's back porch and I was like banging on the window, like, please let me in. So he did. And I literally had nothing. I didn't have my phone. I didn't have my keys. I had nothing. So I was like, may I please use your phone? I just need to use your phone. I'm not, I don't want to get you involved in this. I just need a phone, please. And he was like, okay. So he gave me his phone. I didn't know anybody's phone number by heart. Um, 
not that lived in Orlando anyway, that could help with anything. So I literally logged into Facebook and I called his mom. I video like called his mom on Facebook messenger and she answered. And I was like, I'm at the neighbor's house to the right. I need you to come get me right now. And she already knew. So she came and, and she got me. Picked you up? Yep. She came and she was there really quick. She only lived like around the corner, took maybe 10 minutes. So the neighbor, I pretty much just like tried to stay away from him. I was like, I just need to use your phone. And he was like, listen, if Mike comes in here, I can't protect you. And I was like, I don't expect you to. Like, I just need your phone. I, I get it. So his mom came. I went straight out to the car and she got there, got in, drove off really quick. I guess he was watching, saw that it was her car and then got in his own car and followed us back to her house. And so we got back to the house and we were like, you know, maybe he won't come, whatever. Like maybe he'll just cool off or go back out or something. I don't know. But he showed up and I was horrified that he was just going to bust into the house and continue. So she was like, I don't want him to see you. You stay in here. I'm going to go out and talk to him. And so I went into his sister's room and I literally hid under the bed. Hey sports fans, if you want to see more videos like this, check out some of our other ones right here. And if you like what you see, make sure to hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for more from USA Today Sports.